All right, this is fourth grade, module five, lesson 20. And in this lesson, we are incrementally getting closer to having our students use the standard algorithm for adding and subtracting fractions. Um, at this lesson, however, students are going to be using visual models. They're going to be using tape diagrams, and they're going to be using number lines uh, to visualize and really develop an understanding of why we need common denominators and what common denominators are and what they mean. You can give, as an example, a common denominator uh, example in real life. You could say one apple plus one banana equals two what? Is it two apples? No. Is it two bananas? No. You'd have to come up with some other common characteristics. So you might say one apple plus one banana equals two fruits. Uh, similarly, you could say um, one uh, ball plus one lemon. Okay, now we have to come up with another um, common denominator in this case. Uh, so we might say it equals two roundish things. Or, because this, you might be able to say, oh, it's two yellow objects. So in this case, we have a choice of what our common denominator is. So let's get started on this. So here, we're going to begin finding our common denominator, or in this case, they say like units, to make like units. That's, that's lingo for common denominator, right? And, uh, and we, we're going to be using tape diagrams to do that. So we're going to start with this one-third plus one-sixth. And what we're going to do is we're going to draw two tape diagrams, one for one-third, and one for one-sixth. And we need to make these tape diagrams identical. These tape diagrams as best as I can. All right, so there's our identical tape diagrams. And I'm going to show one-third right here. So there's one-third. And I'm going to show one-sixth down here. So I'm going to cut it in half, cut each of those into three pieces, and then there is my one-sixth. Now, clearly, we can see our units are not the same. Uh, so we can't say one plus one is two, and we have two-thirds, because we don't have two-thirds. And we can't say one plus one is two, so we have two-sixths, because clearly we don't have two-sixths. So we have to have a common denominator. And what we want our students to see, and ideally, I probably would have wanted to make these tape diagrams closer to each other, but we want our students to see that, ah, if we take each of these thirds, and the key is, which units are bigger? Oh, well, the thirds are bigger than the sixths. So we're going to take these big units and cut them into smaller pieces so we have uh, common units or like units. So starting with the thirds, because they're bigger than the sixths, we see we want our students to see that if we cut each of them in half, that basically it goes do 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 do, it goes and it perfectly lines up with the sixths. All right, and so we can cut each of those thirds into two pieces. Now we have sixths. So instead of having one third, we now have two sixths, and I want you to write it directly underneath the thirds. One third is now two sixths, plus the one sixth is still one sixth. We now have three sixths. Now, if they wanted to, students could say one half, but at this point, we don't care. At this point, we're happy with three sixths, because really the focus today is on getting like units. This is not the standard algorithm. This is not the goal. This is merely a stepping stone towards using the standard algorithm that all parents and teachers are familiar with uh, from pre-Common Core. It's important that we develop this physical and visual understanding, this pictorial representation, so that when we teach the standard algorithm, it makes sense. Here's another example. And um, so we're going to start with one-fourth. And then we're going to draw, so here's one-fourth, and then we're also going to draw five, a tape diagram for five-twelfths. So let's start with the one-fourth. Here is my drawing for one-fourth, 
And what I want to do is I want two of those that are identical, so the best I can, and I kind of just cheated, I copied. Uh, so there we go, we have identical tape diagrams, and we're going to draw that fourth, that one-fourth, so it means I'm going to cut it into four equal-sized pieces, and then I need, and I'm going to shade in one of those fourths, and then five-twelfths, oh my goodness, I need to cut this baby into twelve equal size pieces. So I'm going to start with four. There's our hint. Huh. And then I'm going to cut each one of those into three pieces. So there is my twelfths. Now I need to cut color in five of those twelfths. One, two, three, four, five. All right. So there's our tape diagrams. And of obviously we don't have like units or common units. So we need to somehow take these fourths, because those are the bigger units, and chop them up so that we have twelfths. So parents and teachers, give your students a moment. Please don't talk about some standard algorithm about least common multiple and all that sort of stuff. Give your students an opportunity to just sit and think and ponder. And if that means you solve fewer problems on this lesson, fine. <laughs> Let your students think and ponder and develop a mastery themselves, all right? Don't go shortchanging their learning by just teaching them an algorithm or some trick for making, finding a common denominator. So give your students some time, and eventually we're, we want your students to see that, oh, if we cut each fourth, and I'm going to do this in red, each fourth into three pieces, we now have twelfths. So instead of having one fourth, we now have three twelfths, and the five twelfths are still the same. Adding that together, we get eight twelfths. And if your students want, they can simplify by dividing by a common number, both the numerator and the denominator, uh, and get two-thirds. But at this point, really, we're just happy with the eight-twelfths. Now, I bring this problem up uh, as a cautionary tale, because one of the things I noticed in our teacher edition is every example begins with the fraction that has the larger units. So in this case, the fourths are larger than the twelfths. What's tricky about this problem is that this is, the, unlike any of our examples in the teacher edition, this problem begins with the smaller units, and so when our students draw the three-eighths and the one-half, they are going to have to, and let me quickly do this, here's our common units here, and I will duplicate that baby. All right, and then here's our tape diagram. So when they draw, in this case, okay, we're going to get create eighths. And there's our three eighths. And then down here, we're going to cut half. And then there's our one half. What's different about this problem compared to all the others is which one of these fractions, which one of these tape diagrams are we going to chop up into smaller pieces? And for the first time, it's the fraction down here rather than the fraction at the top. Now, that's because what we want our students to understand is we're always going to take the fraction with the larger unit sizes, in this case one half, and chop that one into smaller pieces. And in this case, we want our students to see that we're going to chop each half into four pieces, and so our new number sentence becomes three-eighths plus four-eighths. Just a heads up on that one. Number lines along the same lines, <laughs> no pun intended, um, we're going to start with that three-fifths, and let's do this problem here. So we're going to start with three-fifths. So we're going to draw our number line, and we're going to represent three-fifths. So we're going to start with zero, and we're going to go to one hole here. And then we're going to draw fifths. So we have to cut this into five equal-sized pieces the best we can, and identify that three-fifths lives right here. And now we have to say to ourselves, 
Well, now we need to move on seven tenths. We need to go ahead seven tenths. And of course, in this problem of heads up, um, you're, you're going to need a number line larger than um, one whole, right? Because we need to estimate, is this going to be larger than one as an answer? And yeah, since this is three-fifths is larger than a half, seven-tenths is larger than a half, that means we need to go up to two. So really, our number line needs to be up to two. And so now we're going to cut into fifths. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. And here is our three fifths. All right. So then we need to move forward. So there's our hop of fifths. But now we need to hop forward seven tenths. Well, these are not tenths. These are fifths. So how do we create tenths out of fifths? And in this case, you take each fifth and cut it into two pieces. And all of a sudden, going from zero to one, you now have tenths. Because if you start at the zero and make little hops all the way to one, you're going to have ten little hops. So that really means that three fifths is the same thing as six tenths. And now we're going to hop forward seven more tenths, which means I need to chop these into tenths as well. And now I'm going to hop forward one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So that puts me right here. I just first I hopped forward three fifths, then I hopped forward seven tenths. And I ended up at, where did I end up? I ended up right here. So there's two ways I can think of this. I can either think of this as 13 tenths, because I hopped forward 6 tenths, which is the same thing as 3 fifths, plus I hopped forward another 7 tenths. So 6 plus 7 is 13 tenths. Or I can call this 1 whole and 3 tenths, because I went, here's 1 whole, plus an extra one, two, three tenths. So parents and teachers, um, here's what a number line looks like. And you'll see it's a little bit more abstract than those tape diagrams. So one of the heads up I can give you is if we're going to be adding three fifths plus seven tenths, and, and, and this number line, this single number line idea is a little too abstract for your students. What you can go ahead and do is you can create two number lines. You can create one number line for three-fifths and a number line for seven-tenths. Here's zero to one. Here's zero to one. And you can cut this one into fifths. And there's one, two, three, three-fifths. And you can cut this second one into tenths. And then you can identify where seven tenths is. Let's see, where's seven tenths? So it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven tenths, right there. Seven tenths. And then you can allow your students the opportunity to then say, oh, each of these fifths needs to be cut into tenths. And then you can still say, oh, three fifths is equal to six tenths. And say six tenths plus seven tenths. So you can kind of connect. Um, this looks a whole lot like the tape diagrams from the previous slide. And that's the heads up I want to give you. You might want to think about this as a scaffold if you need to. Um, but really, we want to try and start with this because this single line method is a little bit more abstract and a little bit closer to our goal, which is the standard algorithm. Let's do problem D here, and first thing we can see that this is greater than a half, and this is greater than a half, three-fourths is greater than a half, five-eighths is greater than a half, so we know that this number line is going to go from zero to two, and so one is going to be smack dab in the middle, and uh, so now 
I also want to start by graphing on our number line the fraction that has the larger unit sizes. And 3 fourths has the larger unit sizes. So I'm going to draw, cut everything into fourths and identify 3 fourths as right here. But now, in order to make another hop of 5 eighths, uh, by the way, I want to say this is 3 fourths. In order to make a hop of 5 eighths, I need to subdivide these units and cut each one of them into two pieces, so that is going to give us eighths. I now have eighths. So really, if you think about it, 3 fourths is 6 eighths, and you can see it right here. And now we can go ahead and make a hop of 5 eighths. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So here is our hop of 5 eighths. And where does that put us? Well, it puts us at 1 and 3 eighths. Or you can say it puts us at 11 eighths. Your choice. Because I'm going to go take this over here. 3 fourths plus 5 eighths is the same thing as 6 eighths plus 5 eighths. And so 6 eighths plus 5 eighths, you could say is 11 eighths. And that's why we said the answer here. But you can also see we are three little units beyond one. So that's one whole plus 3 eighths. Two different ways to think about that one problem. Here, cautionary tale. Um, these are the smaller units, these are the larger units, the five-thirds are the larger units. So when you draw your picture, you're going to want to, to, to draw your five-thirds before you draw your one-sixths. And that wraps up Grade 4, Module 5, Lesson 20, using visual models to add with common denominators. We're not quite at the standard algorithm yet, but we're getting close.